Today, let us talk about a controversial topic that has been dividing people across the world since the passing of Queen Elizabeth II. The crown jewels, mainly the Cullinan diamond, the largest uncut diamond ever found in the world, estimated at $400 million plus, which produced two of the most prominent jewels in the British crown jewels collection, such as the Great Star of Africa and the Second Star of Africa. In today's story, we will look at all the facts and myths regarding the history of the diamond, including its discovery, purchase, transfer, and controversy. So as usual, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. On the 26th of January, 1905, a 3,106-carat diamond was discovered in the Premier Mine in the Transvaal Colony by Frederick Wells in present-day South Africa, which at the time was under direct British rule and military occupation between the end of the Second Boer War in 1902. It is said that while around the mine 18 feet below the Earth's surface, he saw a flash of light bouncing off the walls and a diamond as large as his fist. However, another source says that the diamond was actually found by an unnamed mine hand who had then given the diamond to Wells for him to give to his superiors. Ironically, this actually does sound more believable. Well, anyway, the diamond was given the name Cullinan after the mine's chairman, Thomas Cullinan, who happened to be visiting that day. However, it is said that by many experts believe that the Cullinan diamond was only a fragment of an even bigger stone that still needed to be discovered. Shortly after this discovery, the diamond was then put on display at Standard Bank in Johannesburg, where it was seen by eight to 9,000 people. It would later be sent to England in April of the same year. However, there were fears that the diamond might be stolen on the way from Africa to London. It had been arranged that a fake diamond be sent publicly aboard a steamer ship loaded with detectives as a diversionary tactic. As the decoy slowly made its way from Africa on a ship, the Cullinan was sent to England in a plain unmarked box through the post to be sold in London. The story goes from this point, it was then purchased by the Transvaal government for £150,000 in 1907, after it failed to sell at auction for over two years, because no one at the time knew how to cut such a large diamond. It was eventually presented to King Edward VII of Britain, on his 66th birthday at the suggestion of Louis Porter, then Prime Minister of the Transvaal Colony, as a token of loyalty and friendship to the Crown. However, it is reported that the British Prime Minister at the time, Henry Campbell Bannerman, advised against the King accepting this gift. However, King Edward would later be persuaded by Winston Churchill to accept the gift, who himself would receive a replica which he reportedly enjoyed showing off to his guests. In 1908, King Edward chose Joseph Asher, the head of the Asher Diamond Company of Amsterdam, to cut and polish the diamond. It was cut into nine large stones and 100 smaller ones. It is said he spent months studying the stone before attempting to cut it. All nine cuts are owned and are part of the British Crown Jewels collection as two were given to King Edward and he had also bought one for his wife, Queen Alexander, as well as the Transvaal presenting the remaining six to Queen Mary. They currently range from Cullinan 1 to 9, with the most prominent cuts being the Great Star of Africa, or Cullinan I, weighing 530.20 carats, which was the largest stone cut from the diamond, which is currently the centerpiece of the sovereign scepter with cross, and valued between $400 million to $2 billion. This was given to King Edward VII. Another cut was the second star of Africa, or Cullinan II, weighing 317.4 carats, which is placed in the front of the imperial state crown, below the black Princess Ruby. The Princess Ruby has been with the British monarchy since 1367 and is believed to have been mined in Afghanistan. Cullinan II was given to King Edward VII as well. Cullinan III, or the lesser star of Africa, weighing 94.4 carats, was given to Queen Mary, the wife of George V. It had been set on top of a crown that she had personally bought 
the Delhi Duba TR for coronation in India. Kalinin III was permanently replaced on the crown by a crystal model. Queen Elizabeth II frequently wore Kalinin III in combination with Kalinin IV, which weighs 63.6 carats as approach. Kalinin V, weighing 18.80 carats, was first worn as a brooch by Queen Mary, but was later used in a circlet of her crown as a substitute for the Ko Onor, a famous diamond that was believed to be mined in India. The Ko Onor was utilizing the new crown for Queen Elizabeth II in 1937. Asher sold the minor stones to the Transvaal government, which then distributed the remaining diamonds to Queen Mary who put most of her minor stones in a long platinum chain, which Elizabeth II never wore in public, saying that it gets in the soup. Two small stones were also distributed to Louis Porter, who then gave one of his daughters when she turned 17. It is alleged that at some point, the remaining diamonds went to the diamond merchants who supervised the cutting of the Kalanin, and Jacob Roman who co-founded the first trade union in the diamond industry. So now, let's get to the heart of the video, answering the big question that has the world divided. Was this diamond stolen? To start, this is a hard question to answer. As previously mentioned, the diamond was bought by the Transvaal government, with Buckingham Palace also releasing a statement that the Star of Africa was bought by the Transvaal Republic from the Premier Mine, and presented to King Edward VII as a gift in 1907, said a Buckingham Palace spokeswoman. However, the common counter-argument is that this had occurred after the region had been colonized and the natives stripped of their ancestral lands already, and the transaction itself had occurred during the era of colonialism in South Africa, even before apartheid, meaning there was virtually no possible way for the native population to oppose this in any way. Thus, in this perspective, it was unjustly gifted to the British crown, who in this sense benefited from the proceeds of oppression and colonialism. So, the answer to this question really depends on your own personal perspective and history if we are being 100% honest. Because from one perspective, if you are a native black descendant, for example, it can be considered for the most part to be stolen due to the legal framework and era in which it was bought and gifted to the British monarchy. The laws firstly were enacted after early settlers had taken the land already, had been defeated by the British in the Anglo-Boer Wars, and become a British colony. So, already some bias can already be seen to be in place, if we are using this perspective. However, a common counter-argument to this perspective is that many diamonds since the transition to the new South Africa have been sold abroad, which in itself is another topic by itself, but to keep it short, the difference really is the historic context and the era in which this occurred. From another perspective, the diamond can be seen to have been legally bought and gifted to the British monarchy for the most part, as a private company had mined the diamond and sold it to the Transvaal government, which legally made it the Transvaal's government property, and they had gifted it to the British crown, legally making it the property of King Edward VII and his descendants. Because of these opposing perspectives and more, over the years there have been several calls for the United Kingdom to repatriate the Jew, which is also the center of an ownership dispute among at least four countries, including India. But in the context of South Africa, many people and organizations have said it's stolen and must be returned. However, the reality is that the South African government currently and previous versions of it have neither said it's stolen nor asked for the diamonds to be returned as honestly speaking, they are the only authority who can take up such a matter. So really, it's a controversial topic with no real answer. So as previously mentioned, this one really has no true answer. However, if you are in South Africa and are interested in seeing the diamond, you can see a replica of this wonder at the Cape Town Diamond Museum or the Tower of London if you want to see the pieces directly.